casting it for your next level for what is written. What is written is written, but a man had to sign it. But in your destiny, there is a man God put that will execute it. I came as that man. Take your Bible with me this morning. Ezra chapter 8 and verse 23. So we fasted and besought our God for this. And they was entreated of us. Let's see New Living Translation. So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us. And he heard our prayers. I stretch my hands towards you. As the priest over this house, I decree that a new fire has come upon this house. I declare that everywhere you go from now, anyone that sees you will know that God has answered your prayer. Amen. That we know that God has answered your prayer. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. By the reason of this, you move from the realms of expectations to the realms of manifestations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you believe it, shout a big amen. Amen. If you believe it, shout fire. Fire. Hallelujah. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. I want to speak to us briefly this morning on the subject I titled Brutal Dedication to God. Brutal Dedication to God. Matthew chapter 6. Our aim this morning is to understand what it means to be brutally dedicated to God. We seek to understand what it means to be brutally dedicated to God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 31 from verse 31, Matthew 6, from verse number 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewither shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For our heavenly Father knoweth that that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. May the Lord bless his word. Please be seated in the high places above principalities and above powers. Let me hear a big amen. Amen. The subject of dedication to God is very important to every child of God. If you are a true child of God, the subject of dedication is very important. Somebody shout amen. Before we go on, there are four key points I want to state this morning if you have your pen you can write I put it this way number one our root in God determines our fruit in life our root in God determines our fruit in life Jesus speaking the other day he said, I am, the, I am the true vine. He said, any branch in me that does not bear fruit, I will cut it off. He said, but the one that bears fruit, I will prune it so that it can bear more fruit. So take note, our root in God determines our faith in life, our fruit in life. You want to be fruitful, how fruitful you are determines your root in God. Number two, our seriousness with God will determine 
the kind of glory that will be seen in our life. Our seriousness with God will determine the kind of glory that will be seen in our life. God will never do anything with any unserious person. It's not possible. God will never do anything. Everyone he walk with that we saw his hand as standing in their life, the likes of David, Elijah, Jacob, Joseph, Abraham, Esther, Ruth. They were so dedicated, they were so serious with God. So God does not do business with anyone that is not serious. Thirdly, the quality of our relationship with God determines the quality of our result in life. The quality of our relationship with God determines the quality of our result in life. The men I earlier mentioned above in the Bible, that was the result in their life, the level of their relationship with God. Fourthly, our heart for God determines our mark in life. For example, we saw Abraham, we saw Daniel, we saw Shadrach, we saw Meshach, we saw Abednego, we saw so many of them. I can go on and on and measure. The, the mark you saw in their life is as a result of their heart for God. What is your heart for God? Ask somebody. Say, what is your heart for God? Ask your neighbor. Amen. What does it mean to be brutally dedicated to God? What does it mean to be brutally dedicated to God? Number one. Standing on the side of God. Who is on the Lord's side? Who is standing on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? One time, Moses went to the Lord to wait on the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. And by the time he will return back with the tablet of the commandment that Elohim has given to him, why he returned back, he met the people. They were dancing, naked, worshipping a, mo a mortal calf. And then Moses became angry. Was infuriated by the, the insensitiveness. And in Exodus 32 and verse 26, he said to them, Who is on the Lord's side? Let the person come to me. Exodus 32 and verse number 26. Then Moses stood in the gates of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. All the sons of Levi. Who is on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? And if you're on the Lord's side, what does it mean to be on the Lord's side? He came. That means the, 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 the Levites. They said, despite the misbehavior of other people, we will remain standing. We are on the Lord's side. It's a cause. It's our heart. It's our dedication. It is what we have chosen to follow. Come rain, come shine. It doesn't matter what the situation is. I am on the Lord's side. That's what it means. To be brutally dedicated to God. Not this bread and butter dedication. 
It doesn't matter what the pressure is. It doesn't matter what the economy is saying. It doesn't matter what people say or speak about me. I have chosen a cause. My heart is for God. Somebody shout amen. amen. People misbehaved. And Moses came. Was angry. But he said, I want to know who is still on the Lord's side. The Levites said, we. We are on the Lord's side. So to be brutally dedicated means to be on the Lord's side at all times. Somebody shout amen. amen. Still under the number one, I put it this as one A. Take note, please. Standing out on the side of truth. Standing out on the side of truth at all times. No matter what happened, your stand, who you are, in God will not change. In other words, standing on the side of God in all things. That means your action, what you want to do, you want to weigh it if it pleases God first before you do it. That's what it means to stand on the Lord's side at all times. Then one B, being on the same page with God, being on the same page with God, that means at the point where what God likes is what I like. What God hates is what I hate. What it means? On the same page with God. That's what it means to be brutally dedicated. So what God wants is what I want. God, what you want is what I want. Let me love what you love. Let me love what you love. What you want is what I want. What you love, oh Lord, is what I love. What you hate is what I hate. That is what it means to be brutally dedicated. You can't hate what God, you can't love what God hates and hate what God loves. But all dedicated people in the church, all dedicated people, they love what God hates and hate what God loves. They go where God is not. And live where God is. They go to where God is not. And they live where God is. This is undedicated people. They like what God hates. And hate what God loves. If you must be dedicated to God, you must be on the same page. What he wants, you want. Where he wants to go, you want to go. What he loves is what you love. If the, if the heartbeat of God is souls, you cannot be on the same page with him and not love him. And not love soul winning. You are still joking. If, you, if that level of brutal dedication has not happened to you, then you are still far away from God. And there are dimensions of God concerning your destiny you will never actualize. Somebody say, I hear you. When you take sides with God, He will take side with you. And He will stand with you. And everybody will see, see it visibly that God is on your side. And that is what will happen for you this year. Yeah. It's not just saying Amen. Declarations and your say and your thunderous Amen with that coming into His dedication is equal to useless. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you. So taking sides with God is important. Taking sides with God is important. There are people who took side with God. But there are other people. They are not on the same page. They don't take side with, sides with God. When people are fighting the church of God, Fighting servants of God. They are indifferent about they are indifferent about it. 
They don't do anything. Some of them are on the fence. They don't do anything. What happens? What do you say in the middle where people are saying things about Jesus, where Jesus is being discredited, the church of God is being discredited, the church of God is under attack, servants of God under attack. What do you do as a servant of God? Where do you stand? Where do you stand? There was attack on Jesus. After Judas had betrayed him, they came to take Jesus. And Marcus was the captain of, that, of, of those soldiers. And why they were, why the guy was taking Jesus? Peter brought out his sword. How dare you? How dare you? That is what it means to be rugged and brutally dedicated to a cause you are choosing to follow. If you are for Jesus, you must be for Jesus. Is, are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are for Jesus, you must be for Jesus. Declare your stand now. He brought out the sword. How dare you touch my master or talk about my, my savior? He cut off the ears of Peter. And I can tell you this for free. Jesus was happy. He said, this one is a brutally dedicated guy. That's why I look at him. He said, Peter, you are the rock I will build the church. And the gate of hell shall not prevail. It came from the level of his brutal dedication with Elohim. He said, Kai, this brutal dedication you have shown, who else can do this? Peter, on you. So your relationship level with God determines your position in life. You want to see his hand? Serve him like never before. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Jesus said, put Peter, put your sword back. He didn't say throw it away. That means I like the way what you did today. Keep it. Next time, if need be, bring it out again. Hey! Hey! Bring it out if need be. Bring it out when necessary. Don't follow us to talk nonsense about, about, about God's people. Don't follow others to fight the kingdom of God because their place has been described and determined already and it is the place of destruction. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. So the question I will ask before I continue, whose side are you on? Whose side? <laughs> whose side are you on? Are you on the Lord's side? Yes. You must rise to the occasion today to match words with action. Do what you say and say what you do. Somebody shout amen. Amen. One C. Take note of this. Unashamed, unashamed public identification with God. Unashamed public identification with God. Unashamed, I'm not ashamed to identify with God. I'm not ashamed. There are those that are ashamed to stand with God. That's why there are many of you, when you are coming to church, you don't carry your Bible. You don't carry your Bible. You hold your phone. You are ashamed to carry your Bible. You are ashamed. You are ashamed to carry your Bible. That's why God is looking for brutally dedicated, honest people to his kingdom. To make billionaires. That even as billionaires, they will still carry their big Bible on Saturday and go to the street and tell people that Jesus is Lord. That is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. And people stand there and say, is that not that billionaire? That owner of that this? That owner of that? The, the, that, that, that is what Jesus is looking for. Somebody shout amen. Amen. People that are not ashamed 
Unashamed public identification with God. Not people that are ashamed. They are ashamed. In their place of work, they cannot talk about Jesus. In public places, they cannot talk about Jesus. They cannot carry their Bible. They can, in their schools, they cannot talk about Jesus. And Jesus said something very interesting and powerful. He said to the one that is ashamed of me before men. He said, before my father, I will be ashamed of him. He said, but the one that advertises me before men, I will advertise him before my father. You want the world, you want the world to know you. You want the world to see the glory of God upon your life. Advertise the one that gives glory. That's what it means. I am not ashamed. Somebody shout amen. Amen. The next one E, I put it this way, I, I identify with God when it's not the popular thing to do. I identify with God when it's not even the popular thing to do. Everybody say, ah, everybody is talking one thing or the other. You are saying, no, I'm not standing there. I'm identifying with him even when it's not popular to do. For example, you see something happen in the book of Daniel. The Bible said something concerning the three young Hebrew men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And what was it? As at that time, the king passed a decree and gave an order. As a matter of fact, you can pass it for an executive order. That means executive order is like, is like an urgent order that comes from the president or the king. That something must be carried out urgently. It was an executive order. And the order says, because in his, in his, in his disposal, there is, an, there is an intelligence report that says that there are three men that refuse to bow down to his God. So they made the image and declared a public holiday where everybody must compulsorily gather. And he said, at the point in time where you hear the sound of the, of the dulcimer, the sackboard, and all kinds of musical instruments. He said, when you hear those sounds, everybody bow down to the golden image. That was the popular thing to do for everybody to bow down. But there were three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, we bow down to no gods. Because what was popular in that time and there to do was to bow down to the graven image. They would have taken excuses, Lord, you know we have to save our life before we continue to serve you. That's not truth. To be brutally dedicated is the kind of dedication and mentality that was found in Esther. She said, go and pray for me three days. And me and my maidens too we will pray. Then I will appear before the king, even though it's not the right time. If I perish, I perish. Jesus said, he that wants to get his life will lose it. And he that is ready to lose his life will get it back. If I perish, I perish. If I die, I die. If I live, I live. For God is not popular. They would have said, Oh, God, you know we are in a foreign land, and you know we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to be against the government. They are going to kill us. Yes, everybody will die. The Bible said it's appointed unto every man to die once. And after death is judgment. At the sound of that, everyone fell, on the, everyone fell down to a golden image. But here we are three men, young men, standing with their head and shoulders high. The king said, you did not bow down? How dare you guys? I give you the second chance to do so. They say, oh king, please, you don't need to waste your time. We want to let you know the God whom we serve is able to deliver us because we will never bow down to a man-made God. We want you to know that we will never do it whether dead or alive. And we also want you to know that we don't need your second chance to hell with your second chance. If you throw us into the fire, we want to let you know also that the God whom we serve is able to deliver us. We also want to let you know, in case he chooses not to deliver us, we are good like that. We are ready to die. That's brutal dedication. 
That is what it means to be brutally dedicated. You can't be dedicated, you are giving excuses. When it comes to the things of God, that's the only place you give excuses. There are dimensions of God you will never see. You will pass out of this life and never see that dimension. I pray fire of such brutal dedication to come upon this church. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One E, identifying with God when it's not the popular thing to do. I said that right. Identifying with God. Okay, let's, you know I'm still on number one. So let's go to the number two because of time. Number two is placing God first in all things. All blessing God first in all things. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Matthew 6 33. Seek ye the kingdom of God first and its righteousness. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But there is the kingdom first. First thing first. In all things, God first. You wake up in the night, in the midnight, or in the morning. Your phone should not be first. God first. Even the days, if there is any day I'm not, I'm not having anything to do in the office, I'm going to, when I finish my midnight prayer, maybe around six, after six or seven, I'll go back to rest and sleep. And when I wake up, or my, my, my daughter, any of my daughters or son will come to the, to the room to wake me that they want to go to school. Now, when they wake me up, they know that I will not, if they greet me, I will not answer them. Because I must still go down first to God in prayer and say, thank you for the gift of life. First things first. Not you, you wake up, the first thing you do is your phone. You're on your phone. That's why you will have messages that will cause you to have problems. You're on your phone. And unknown to many of you, that is the modern day idol you worship. Because the devil knows that many people will not want to wear their agbada and wear their suit and go to Shirai. So the devil, did, what did he do? He remodeled it. He put it inside phone gadgets. Some of you, you are sleeping, your phone is by your bedside. You wake up in the morning, in fact, you bring charger close to your bed. You wake up in the morning, it's your phone. Either you are on WhatsApp, you are on Instagram, you are checking one rubbish or the other. That, that is how you will go and see one message that will never do anything for you. The question you will ask yourself, those time you spend on phone, what do they bring to you? No message or chat you are having that can make you a billionaire. But by divine intervention, things can happen. Things can happen. You want to serve him? Serve him. First in everything. First in all things. Somebody shout amen. amen. So let me quickly put it under that. The A part of it, I said this. Making God and his interest the primary pursuit of your life. Making God. Everything about God, his interest, the primary pursuit of your life. God, everything about you matters to me. First, everything. You are so dedicated and you fear God. That no matter the money God gives to me, if I have not removed my tithe first, I feel like a sinner that I have sinned against God. I must take my tithe out first. Whatever God gives us as a church first, we don't touch it, we give it. As a person, we give it out. 
And this is not that it's necessary that you must do it. Or no, nobody puts gun on your head to do it. But hear me. You can use the same money to do anything you like. But there are dimensions in God you will never see until you die. There are parts of God you will never see until you die. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto thee. Somebody shout amen. Amen. I can't hear your amen. Amen. What do I mean? You must also know that the reason why God has given you whatever he gave to you is for you to serve him. God put you in a big position in that office. It's for you to serve him. And because you are in charge, you can say, oh, tomorrow, you, you, those that have not given their life to Jesus, it's easy for you to convert them. You can say, tomorrow, everybody here, come, we are going to my church to worship tomorrow. God gave you the money, not for you to oppress people. He gave you the money to advance the cause of his kingdom. Not for anything. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. First, every other thing shall come. Once this culture of brutal dedication to God is upon one's life, you become so dangerous and deadly that even the devil becomes tired of your matter. And God says, I know when I bless this guy, eh, anything about him is me first. And God will continue to bless you. I see you rising above your expectation. Amen. But with the fire of this brutal dedication, let it fall on you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because this message is a, is a very, very strong message. And we are starting with it in 2024. It shows you that God is up to something. God is up to something. Yes. When God began to drop this in my spirit towards this direction, I knew that this year, 2024, there is a dimension of greater works we we'll, we'll want to enter into. That's why I declare that it's our year of greater works in the place of prayer. But for you to enter into greater works is not to declare it with mouth. It's to, it's to work into it through actions of brutal dedication. Somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then be making God the first cons consideration in all life decision. Making God, should I repeat that again? Yes. Making God the first consideration in all life decision. So in every decision you want to make, bring God into it first. Whether in marriage, whether in job. You must bring God into consideration first. This thing I will do, does it please God? Yes, you might give a testimony. Oh, God just gave me a job. Oh, where I got the job, I am receiving 1.5 million naira every month. People will clap. Amen. Hallelujah. But the truth is that what kind of job are you doing there? Somebody shout amen. Is it the kind of job that this Sunday you will come to church, next Sunday you will not come to church? Is it the kind of job, maybe what they are even asking you there to do, is that you are helping your boss to organize women? Or even organize men? And that is your own job. And you even come to pay tight with that kind of money. It's useless. It doesn't have any reward. Can I hear him, somebody? So it's not, it's not just enough to say, oh, I have a job. What, what can, that means even in your job, you must, consi your con the con you must consider God first. Lord, this job, will it permit me to serve you? This job, will this job bring anything compromised? Some of you don't care. That is to show that you are not brutally honest in your dedication with God. Because if you are brutally honest, you must vet everything before God, before you say yes. Or maybe part of the work you are doing where they pay you 1.5 million is to forge signature of people. 
and you, and you say they are paying you big money. Somebody shout amen. So both in job, both in marriage, in every life's decision, God must be in the center of it or in your life. Even when you want to marry, you must inquire from the Lord. You must also sit down, prayerfully consider it. Vet everything before the Lord. Lord, this person, because there are, there are people, you, what you consider is, oh, this brother, there is a brother that wants to marry me. There is another brother, but this brother has big house. He has big car. This brother has money. That is the only thing. You are not thinking about whether that brother, after a while, is going to ask you, don't go to church again. You are not considering whether after a while, that brother is going to ask you, come, don't pray in this house again. If you want to marry me, you marry me. If you don't want to marry, don't pray in this house. That is my law. Somebody shout amen. Amen. There's a true life story of somebody I know. The guy was on fire for God. On fire. What I say on fire, on fire. He, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a crazy soul winner. He wins souls for God. As, as at that time, he says he entered into covenant that he must talk to 20 people about Jesus, that he must bring at least five people to church every week. He was on fire for Jesus. He went to marry a lady. And before you know it, the lady was a fire extinguisher. Somebody shout amen. amen. The lady started ext extinguishing all the fire. <laughs> before you know it, the guy will come to church on Sunday and in another two months you won't see him again. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Until the guy became a drunkard. Yes. Became a drug addict. He never had the chance to come back to God and rekindle his fire again. The fire was never ignited again. The guy died. Yes, he died. So, 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 this is the problem and this is the reality. Oh, the guy has money, oh, that's what matters. He has big car. If you see his house, eh, even you and your family people, that's what you are looking for. You are not bothered whether you will be destroyed in that place. That, that of God, there is no consideration about God. If I marry this person, what is his level with God? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You have to bring all these things before the Lord. Consider it properly. Not to say, oh, that one. You already say even God spoke to you. You already say you saw it in the dream because he has money. Somebody shout amen. amen. Or you as a man, you saw a woman. No praying, no, no consideration of the Lord. Because the woman is flashy. You say, ah, this one, this is the one. Not knowing whether if she's carrying a fire extinguisher. Because when you see people that don't fear God tells you that they are looking for somebody that fears God. You don't understand that language. Somebody shout mercy. Yes. <laughs> uh, somebody shout amen. amen. Everything in life whether you want to relocate Everybody is going to America. Everybody is going to, uh, everybody is going to United Kingdom. Everybody is going to Canada. Yes, is that the will of God? I have traveled to many countries. 
I'm well traveled. I've seen people that if they tell you this person is abroad, I've seen people that their father died, they could not come. Their mother died, they could not come. For I, there, there was one guy I saw in Italy from a state. If you look at him, eh, so dirty. His father died, he did, he did not go. His mother died, he did not go back. Amen. He says, I don't have money to buy tickets. I don't have a house in anywhere in Nigeria. I don't have a house anywhere in Europe. But he's been there for over 25 years. Yes, over 25 years. And he's likely going to die there. Why? Because everyone was traveling. And they say, oh, what is popular? Everybody's traveling. Let me also travel. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 2, there was famine in the land. The economical situation as at that time in the land of Philistine was very bad. And people were relocating in droves. They were jackpying here and there. But one man called Isaac. The Bible said, and there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of Philistines, unto Jera. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So there was famine already. But God told him, don't go. Remain here. That's why you can travel also. And you go there and you'll be stranded. Is it the will of God? So there must be consideration. Whether if God is in this or not. Don't do because others are doing. Do because God says you should do. Oh yes. Hallelujah. Yes, you travel there and you, you, you go there, you are stranded. All kind of story going on. Husband and wife living together. They just travel to UK and the wife will divorce the husband. Even looking for how police will arrest the husband so that she can go and marry another man. Be careful. Whether it's in the decision to travel, whether it's about bring God inside. At least God does not just know now like a man. God knows now. He knows tomorrow. He knows the future. So he knows whether it will work for you. Not any man you see. Oh, if I marry this man, poverty is over in my family. You will die in poverty. Because the purpose of God is not in what you are looking for. There is no consideration. Not all that glitter is gold. And not everything inside the water is fish. Not everything. Not everything in the, inside the water is fish. Not everything inside the water is eatable. I wish it together. Somebody said, talk to me. Talk to me, Papa. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's see, see because of time. Giving God, giving God the first preference in all life's action. That's to say, you can, you can wake up in the morning without nobody, God first. Things are not going the way I want it, but God first. It, that still doesn't take God away from my life. There are people that follow God only when it is okay for them to do so. You can't work every day, but on Sunday is the only day the enemy gives you an excuse not to go to church. So God is not in the center of it. You are not brutally dedicated to God. And that's very dangerous. Whether it rain, I will still go to church and serve him. Whether things are going well, I will still... Whether in the service of God, I am going through battles. What shall separate us from the love of God? Is it famine? 
Is he attached, shipwreck, and all of those things? What you are asking God to do, he has not done it yet. Are you serving God to use him because of what he can do? You are not seeking him in truth and the spirit. And Job said the other day, though he slay me, yet will I continue to serve him. I'll serve my God in my own way. I mean in his way. Job 23 and verse 12. As some of you, they take your car today, they take one thing or the other from you. You have many excuses why you cannot come to church. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than what? That's to say, everything that comes out from the mouth of God, that is my preference. Everything about God is what I want to do. What he wants is what I want. Not about what I want, but what God wants. That's what it means to be brutally dedicated to God. To be brutally dedicated to God is that everywhere you go, everyone knows Jesus because of you. They know your stand. They know when they are looking for to lie, you are not the person, you are, you are not the right person. To be dedicated is not only when you are in the church. Even in your place of work, others are lying. They came to church by nine. Yet in the register, they wrote 7, 730. And you too, you are writing 730. You saw other people buying something and adding something to the receipt. Do you consider what you are doing if God is happy about it? I pray for you today that the fire of this brutal dedication will come upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You wake up in the morning, I don't want to talk to any man until I, until I talk to God first. Somebody shout Amen. You receive your salary. Oh, if it's first food, I don't want to do anything until I give to God first. You receive money. I don't want to do anything until I give God his 10% first. I fear God so much that service will not be going on. I will be walking up and down. The secret things of the Lord belong yet unto them that fear him. That service will not be going on. You will go outside and stand. Whether as a member, whether as a worker, whether as a pastor, you are not dedicated. You are not honest. And it's the reason why there are dimensions of life. That, that, that is the reason why you still keep repeating the same cycle every year, every season. You must come to that point in life where you say, God, I make up my mind to serve you in truth and in spirit. Jesus said, the hour has come when all those who worship God will do so in truth and the spirit. For such, the Father seeketh. Tell your neighbor, I make up my mind to serve him in truth and the spirit. Say it to three persons. I make up my mind to serve you in truth and the spirit. Amen? D. Making God central to all of life issue. Everything about my life is centered on God. Whatever I want to do is centered on God. Whatever action I want to take, oh, does it please God? What does the word of God say about it? Oh, God, is this your will? Everything about my life. Everything about your life. That's what it means. Look at me. I've discovered that the people of the other religion, Muslims, they are brutally dedicated to whatever they serve, more than Christians. When is their time for prayer? If you go to a place like Dubai, United Arab Emirates, or you go to Qatar, you have $10 million, $1 million, you want to do business, 
You go to the sheikh and it's their time for prayer. He tells you, you can wait for me or you can go. If you cannot wait for me, it is my time for prayer. If you cannot wait, you can go. It means Allah don't want me to have the money. But that is when a, a Christian will run out of the church. Say this is going on. You are going to make calls outside. Do you have fear for that God? I've seen with my eyes growing up. I was still in secondary school. And there was this riot that time. All the schools in the city. There was riot everywhere. And before the riot started. Or before the riot you know, drew close to these people. They have started their prayer. So why is the students, schools, secondary schools, joining together, marching forward the whole road? There was a bonfire everywhere. While they were marching, and some hoodlum, you know, we always use the opportunity. We seize it and start stealing and robbing people. So why is the students were advancing? I was, I, was, I, was, I was going home from there, but I was following them in the same direction. Watch what happened. Everybody was running. These guys, they did not cover their shop or anything. And someone went to tell them, hey, 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 students, they are doing riot. They are coming, they are coming. They were still doing like this. They didn't mind anybody. By the time they were done praying, the students stole all their watches. The students stole their dollars. Those that have brought you the change, stole everything. They finished their prayer. And they came out People were sympathizing with them. They said, don't worry. Allah will provide. That means the Allah they trust that they are that dedicated to. They said the Allah will provide. That was all. If he's a Christian, ah, oh boy, you know, you're waiting to happen. You can't serve God like that and see his hand in your life. Look at it in, 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 in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. Around the B part, please have it display on the screen. You can't serve God that way. You are in the church, you are bringing out your phone. You are, doing, you are sending message, what's up? Oh boy, babe, how far? We did church, oh. I call for video, show me papa, show me, show me, show me church. Show me where they go. And you are in church. You are in church. Your phone is on. Even when you go to a bank where you have your money, they collect your phone from you. Is that correct? They lock it up. When you come out, you take the phone. How much more in the church? You are praying. You are going through your phone. You are praying. Shakabarano kopapa. Yandakabalakata. Hello, hello. I did pray. Come back, come back. I did pray. So the call is so important that the call can interfere with your prayers. To hell with that call. If the, if the call is too much, the person is incessantly calling you. All you need to do, while you are speaking in tongues, while you are praying, you can pick it and put it on speaker. Don't say hello. The person will at least know that you are praying. You can't, you can't, you can't, no. I've never seen Muslim praying and they, they, they are with their phone. I've never seen it in my life. That's their level of brutal dedication. That's why they are the ones you find these suicide bombers. Because they told them that if you keep more people, when you get to heaven, Allah will give you virgins. In which of the heavens? Can I hear amen? And they, so they so believe in their God that they are brutally dedicated that they would tie bomb on somebody. The person runs into other people knowing that he or she will die. And yet you are you a Christian. If, there is, if rain fall in the midnight, you will say, oh, the rain is too much weather. You will not come to church. And you want to grow. It says, wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, 
I said indeed that my house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall lightly be esteemed. Men don't just become great. They pay price behind the scene. They take whatever they believe so serious. Why do you think people in the other kingdom, a native doctor, a grandmaster, says to this, to, to this person, wake up at midnight by 3 a.m., go to Four Road Junction and Bath, a big man, person, papa, we go to Junction and Bath and do, and do enchantment incantation. And you, they ask you to wake up 3 a.m., you say, uh, Papa, can, can't we do it 6 a.m.? They tell you fasting and prayer is going on. There are many of you that never attended it for once. You want to see God. The people that worship Satan, they are so dedicated to Satan. Watch. Look at what Satan said to Jesus in Luke chapter 4. The Bible said he took him to a very high mountain. In a moment of time, he showed him the glory of the world. And he said to him, If you will bow down and worship me. Give me Luke chapter 4 from verse 7. If you will bow down and worship me, all this shall be done. That means... These things don't just enter into people's hands without a level of dedication. Dedication means whatsoever you are asked to do, you must do it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Verse 8. Come now. Look at what Jesus said. Will you say the same thing? You are, you are, you are a Christian. You are in church. And somebody is telling you that there is a place that will carry you to. With all the power of God you have seen. Are we still together? Yeah. With all the power of God you have seen. With all the demonstration of God you have seen. And yet somebody still took you to somewhere where that is powerless. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only shalt thou serve. There is a difference between worshipping and serving. What most of you come to church to do, you are worshippers but you don't serve. To serve means, hear what it says in Exodus 23, 25. You will serve the Lord your God. It didn't say you will worship the Lord your God and they will bless. You will serve, he will bless. To serve means even when it's raining, I'm going to church, nothing will stop my service. What God wants is what I want. What he loves is what I love. I'm praying for somebody today. Such will be the kind of dedication that will come on you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because of time, let me rush things up. Then the E part of it, that will be the last one in number two, making God to have the final say in all matters of your life. Making God to have the final say in all matters of your life. Oh, I want us to do this business. It's okay, no problem. Let me go and pray. I want to embark on this journey. Okay, let me go and pray. Any decision you want to take, let God be part of it. Let God be involved in everything and you will see the hand of God in your life. Amen. I can hear your amen. Amen. Number three is the last year. Number three is the last. Please take note of this. I wrote here, commitment to God against all odds. When we talk about brutal dedication, is to be committed to God against all odds. To be committed to God when things are working. To be committed to God when things are not working. There are people that are only coming to church because they are looking for blessing. Not that they are coming to serve God. 
Remove blessing. Remove the power of God. Remove healing. Remove prophecy. Remove deliverance. They won't be in church. They are seeking the hand of God. What his hand can do. And they are not seeking his face. But Jesus said, the hour has come when those who worship me will do so in truth and the spirit for such the father seeketh. Job chapter 13 and verse 15. Job 13 and verse 15. God wants you to come to the point that you are so dedicated to him that he says to the devil, listen, eh, if you touch that my son, eh, he will mess you up. And the devil said, no, he will not mess me up. I will attack all his finances. I will attack his health. I will remove this. I will remove that. Let's see if he will still serve you. Can you come to the point? Like Job declares here, though he slay me, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Though it's not going well, I will still serve him. Though the children I'm looking for, it has not come yet, I will serve him. Though the marriage I'm praying for has not come yet, I will still serve him in faithfulness. Though things are not working, though, though my doors are not open, I will still serve him. Oh, we have a meeting to sign that contract this Sunday, sir. It's not possible, except when I come back from church. They just tell you, oh, contract, no problem. Today, no church. Clear church agenda. Go and sign contract. The Bible says there is a way that seems good in the eyes of men, but the end is destruction. Somebody shout amen. amen. We saw these guys. Let's see Daniel chapter 3 and verse 16. Against all odds, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Uh -uh. Fire heated seven times, then it, it won't be heated. And if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand O king but if not that's to say even if God refuse to bless me oh people are asking me the unbeliever or unbelievers they are asking me where is my God yes the unbelievers are doing well do you know also some dangerous things those unbelievers are doing and you cannot do. You see the unbeliever uh, dressing well, smelling nice, driving good car. That's all you see with your optical eyes. Do you see the backyard of those things? Did you see the other side of those things? Behind those things are people that are, you are, are pouring blood to altars. Behind those things are people that are asked not to eat particular food on certain days. Now, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods. In fact, that if, 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 if we die, we die. But O king, imagine strangers daring a president in his country. They say, His Excellency, we want you to know, to hell with you and your gods. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of what? Fury. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should hit the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. That means, you know, there are degrees of fire. There are levels of fire. And this one is, is beyond the normal level. He said, throw them into the place. They said, no problem, we are ready. Look at us, tie our hand. If we die, we die. If God choose not to save us, we will still die. If he wants to deliver us, okay. So don't threaten me with anything. There is nothing you can threaten me with. Against all odds. 
Somebody shout amen. Amen. Quickly, I put this under this number three, three A, or I call it number one. Functioning in all unconditional devotion to God. That's to say, no matter what happened, my service to God is not tied to any condition. In fact, I am conditioned to serve him at all times, whether good or bad. That's the kind of fire. You want to see greater things this year, greater works this year. This is the kind of service that God is requiring from us. Say, Lord, I will serve you. I will serve you. With no condition. With no condition. I will unconditionally serve you. Unconditionally serve you. Amen. Amen. Then the, B, the B here says, serving God not for what he not for what he does, but for who he is. We must come to the point of serving God. Not because, oh, I'm serving God. Ah, because yesterday God gave me money, I bought a car. Oh, yes, no. I have discovered one thing about me. Even when we have the church going, we are building the church that I forget that we are still living as a tenant in Ogun State. Somebody shout amen. It was not all about what God can do that we are serving him for. But we are serving him for who he is. And we bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will continually be in my mouth. All times. In times of sickness. In times of in times when things you are not expecting happen. Not saying, oh God, did I sin against you? Lord, what sin did I commit? Why is this problem not going? No, it's part of service. It's part of service. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Somebody shout amen. Amen. We must learn how to seek his face and not his hand. Because of his hand means what he can do. His face means to serve him in truth and in spirit. Lord, we have come to serve you. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Then the next year, three see establishing deep roots in God that are not shakable by the winds and the storms of life. Establishing deep roots with God that are not shakable by the winds and storms of life. For example, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they say, come, we will, not, we will not bow down to serve your gods, to hell with you. We cannot shake. Bring your storm. Do your worst. Say what you like. The course we have chosen to follow. We either live or we die. Somebody shout amen. Is somebody getting blessed now? I can't hear you. Yes, sir. Three D functioning as an all weather Christian. All weather Christian, rather than existing as a fair weather Christian. Fair weather Christian. The, the, the best, what it means to be brutally dedicated is to be, a, to be an all-weather Christian. No matter what the situation is, I am serving God. Not fair-weather Christian. Ah, no, things are not going well. I've been praying. I've been praying. Ah, they have prayed for me. Nothing has happened yet. So they are serving God. One day Jesus turned. He looked at the people. He said, you see these people following me. They, follow, they are following me. Not from their hearts. But because I gave them bread to eat yesterday, that's why they are following me. Are you following God because he can give you bread? Are you coming here just because you believe God can heal you? Just you believe, oh, God can speak a word over your life or God can reveal things about you? That is not service. You must learn how to serve him in truth and in what? And in spirit. Somebody shout amen. Amen. I can't hear your amen. Amen. Then lastly, because of time, I have many things to say, but we're going to divide it probably after I start our uh, revival series. Uh, I will find time to visit part two and part three of this. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Last, today, because of time, 
existing and being used by the Almighty to teach the enemy a, the lesson of his life. That means you are existing and God can be proud of you and use you as an example to teach the enemy the lesson of his life. For example, Daniel. Ah, Satan comes and says, Ah, you think Job is, is, is serving you for nothing? Is it not because you have blessed him and you have made edge over him? God said, Devil, you don't know anything. He said, You see that, my Job? Touch him. I will use him to teach you a lesson. And the devil came in full force, took everything away from Job, and entered into the wife of Job and said, The wife said, Curse God and die. This kind of life you are living, what kind of life is it? Curse him and die. And he said, shall I receive good and not receive the evil also? From the Lord. At the end of it, Job did not curse God. But rather I said, though you slay me, will I live? Though you slay me, even though that was his revelation, that whatever I was going through was from God. He said, he said, don't you slay me, but me, I will not stop serving you. I will not stop. Somebody shout amen. amen. I will not stop. And the Bible said, imagine when Satan went back before God, they called results. And God said, Satan, did I not tell you? Can God boast of you? Can God boast about you? What about Daniel. God has told Satan, you see Daniel, no matter what you do, he will never bow down to your pressure. He said, okay, make we see now. So they threaten him that the person that continues to pray, they will throw the person into the den of life. And then the Bible said it came to pass. Daniel opened the window of Jerusalem. Instead of him to pray more, he began to speak in tongues. He began to pray more. And they said, king, we caught him red-handed. We have the record. And the king said, Really? throw him into the lion's den. And they made sure that the lion was never fed. So that when Daniel comes, the lion would devour him. But as soon as Daniel showed up, God went into the, into the den with him. Into, the, into lion's den with him. When lion saw him, lion said, you look like the one from the lion of the tribe of Judah. And the following morning, the king came and said, ah, uh, he was in a hurry to go and see what became of, of Daniel. What kind of faith? How is he serving this God? Let me see if that is God can deliver him. Then when he went there, he saw Daniel. He even saw the lion, the lions putting their hand, playing with Daniel, giving Daniel a high five. Yeah. Hey! Hey! He said, Daniel! Are you still there? Is your God whom you serve continually able to deliver you? And then I say, oh yes. Last night before I came, he sent his angels to shut the mouth of the lion. Uh -huh. Brutal. The truth that the truth, the three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king woke up in the morning. He said, Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what is going on? I thought I threw three men in here. But now, you know, they were banned. They were banned in, cha in chains and in fetters. They threw them into the fire. The fire was only able to break the chain and the fetters. Whilst they were walking inside the fire, the king came. He said, I thought I threw three men into this fire. They said, yes. They said, king, maybe it's because you are just waking up. Go and wash your face. Give me a handkerchief. Ah, yeah, that balaga, that yeah, balaga. He gave order. He said, bring all of them out. Do you understand? Not rice and beans, and were Christian. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no harm. You will walk through the fire. He said, you will walk through the fire. I will be with you. You will walk through the waters. They will not submerge you. 
he will go with you. In your problem, God is there. In your pressure, God is there. If you are dedicated to him in truth and the spirit, somebody shout yes. Yes. And they send the brother. He said, anyone that will not serve the God of Daniel or Shadrach and Meshach, Abednego, they shall be put to death. So God, part of your brutal dedication is that God wants to use you to teach the devil pepper. Cameroon pepper. Receive that mantle in the name of Jesus. Amen. So begin to love what God loves. Hate what he hates. Want what he wants. And you will see the hand of God in your life. Amen. Somebody say, I receive that fire. I receive that fire. 